is um, a watercolour that I'm doing and I haven't, apart from that watercolour doodle, I haven't touched my watercolours for years and years and years and I'd only just started playing around with watercolour back then. Um, I've never had a watercolour lesson. Uh, I haven't really watched all that many videos on watercolouring or anything so it's just what I've played around with and I should be doing it while I'm talking. It's probably incredibly boring just sitting there listening to me. Right, um, but then I got um, um, um all the time and lose my train of thought, which is what I've just done now. I'll get better at this, I promise. Sorry. Yeah, anyway, I just, I, I just thought that I'd finish the last one off petal in real time then you can see what I'm doing I mean I know it's not a proper tutorial or anything because I'm only a learner myself um, I can't really do a proper tutorial tutorial I don't know any of the proper terms of what you should really be doing um, it's just I know that a lot of people tend to be very frightened of watercolour and there's really no need. Right, what I wanted to say was if, if you're starting out and you want to experiment as you go along, the best thing to pick is something with lots of little segments. Then you're not messing around with a great big piece if you're a bit nervous of it. You know, you're not having to do huge big areas before it all dries. So something with little segments in is brilliant for practicing on. If I zoom in any more you, you won't see my paints and stuff so I don't know, we'll figure it. Basically all I've been doing is getting the lightest, I don't know why I've picked, well I do know why I've picked yellow and is it violet? Mauve, sorry. It's those two. I've got um, a set of really good quality, artist quality paints, but and a, a set of really nice brushes as well. But I've promised myself that I'm not allowed to touch them until I've done a couple of pieces that I'm sort of proud of. Um, or happy with, should I say. Basically, all I've been doing is getting the weakest wash of my lightest colour to wet down after slightly erasing my pencil lines because I didn't want pencil lines around the outside. So, and th this paper I've I mean, I haven't had much experience with watercolour, but this paper is not good at all. I'll show you what make it is. I, I got it on a holiday, so I don't even know if you can get it in this country or wherever. I don't, I don't find it particularly nice to work on. Right. So basically, really, I mean, you can hardly see any colour there. You probably can't see any colour there. I can just about. I'm just going over the paper a couple of times and getting the bit that I want soaked. And if there's a bit that's the true darkest, then I don't soak that quite as much. So when you actually put the paint on, it sinks more into the paper and stains it more. 
so you get it at its truest, darkest. That's how I do it. There's probably real watercolourists out there going, No! You don't do that. Ninety-nine percent of you is probably the same. <laughs> what a blooming horrible colour, colours. And if I accidentally go outside this line, then I'll back off and let it dry. Or else you can end up with whatever colour you're flooding in, bleeding like crazy into the surrounding. So. This is definitely the wimpy way of doing the non-committal <laughs> way that I'm a big coward way. So it's basically stopped sucking water off my brush now and then what I've been doing probably totally the wrong way around and everything but I don't mind I just I just don't care. At the end of the day it's your art if you're happy with it. You know, you're happy with it. A piece of tissue at the side. If you want to check how strong your colour is get a piece of tissue obviously similar colour to your paper and just touch it to it and see how much colour it leaves behind and if you're happy with that proceed so basically I've been going in with the shadowy bits just so I know where they're going to be. I mean, you go back several times and carry on jiggling it around until you're happy. Nothing's set in concrete at all. If you've got a tricky brush stroke to do, practice it with your hand first a few times before touching the paper. Make sure your, your, your wrist movement can make that movement in a nice sweeping line. You know, if it's a really thin line or something. And constantly refer back to what you're painting. Even if something looks wrong to you, well, if you're copying a picture of a rose and it looks like a rose to you, go with what your eyes are seeing, not with what you think a rose should look like. If you do it quite like, like this and you realise you've got something slightly in the wrong place, you go back and change it. I've changed 
the middle started off, I mean it's still bad is the middle, but the middle started off atrocious. Um, every now and again. So a piece of uh, duster. Something on there. Um, yeah, I, I keep neatening up the edges and just trying to make it look better. Right, so I've, I've basically got my shadow, this bottom bit's drying out a little bit. Go back in with a watered down yellow. That doesn't really have any of this dark edging on, like this bit doesn't. I just want to keep it wet anyway, in case. I need this bit to be wet, because it needs to bleed to make the dark edge a bit more realistic but go back up into that colour a little bit or all the way back up if you want yeah I'll have to on this petal because this petal's mostly yellow well <laughs> not on the picture it isn't yellow as long as you don't flood it, you know, you're not going to have a problem. You'll have slight smudging, but it looks better with slight smudging than harsh lines. So, I want to put this darky edge in. So, I'll make sure the brush is slightly moist and pick up a little bit of the strong colour and while that's still wet it's not quite strong enough but it's not quite wet enough either I prefer to do it a few times and you're not stuck with something horrible I just don't know, I, the way I've been doing it, I've been doing it a few times and uh, as I say the colour's probably not everybody's taste but I'll have to uh, change it into black and white and see what that looks like. I'm just dabbing it and encouraging it to flow but trying to keep in the direction that the petal is actually in. And you can push colour around as well. Depends on your paper, I suppose, and everything. You just you got to play. Right, I'm gonna take a little bit stronger colour. That is quite strong. It's not too too sopping wet. There's not big puddles. I think I'll leave that bit because that bit is a little bit wetter. 
still a little bit too wet. So I, I don't know if this is going to help anybody or not, but if you want me to put more of my practice pieces up, um, and talk through, you know, what I'm doing and. How I'm finding it, no problem. If it makes a difference between you attempting to do watercolour, watching me mess up a few times. And apparently... <laughs> Apparently my mother wants lessons, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> right, need some more shadow around there while it's still slightly damp. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to that yellow. wet it down to where it was wet. I mean everybody goes, oh no you can't re really wet it and once you've done so much back off and leave it alone. As long as you don't put one big pool of water in the middle of a I mean I wouldn't put a big pool of water in the middle of that, you'd end up with do they call it a cauliflower around the outside because all the pigment gets pushed around to the outer edge as long as you use your noggin oh strong yeah it's a strong colour on there as long as you use your noggin and, and think about it It's running down a little bit too much, so I'll tilt it. No light shining on it, I can't see a thing. I've actually been holding a, to <laughs> a torch in my hand because the lighting set up good for the camera. It's not right good for me to see what I'm doing. I don't know if there's a, a proper term for this kind of probably far tossing around um, kind of technique. I know it's wet in wet, but it it's not like wet in wet that I've seen. People just tend to go whack whack. There you go. It's done. Which is what I was intending with this piece. I 
but as always, I can't bring myself to do it. I need lessons in how to just whack it down. That's still a bit wet, it's just smudging out. Right, there's quite a bit of shadow. That's still a little bit too wet. Right, it's alright. It's just that I'm going to try and prop it up. Um, if I dry that off a little bit, I'll show you how I've been sorting out some of the edges and some of these lines. I mean, some of them get created as you do it, but all I've been doing is... Which one did I do last? I think it was this one, so I won't go anywhere near that one because that one might still be slightly damp brush with hardly anything on. Look at the way that the petal is. I mean, the lines on there would go round and down. The lines here would go in that direction. So just really faintly pushing down slightly and lifting up on the brush and then what I've been doing is basically the same it's a bit strong colour that my, hang on yeah my hand covers it up Which one were I on? <laughs> yeah, right. Nope, hang on. Yeah, that one might not. There. Um, right, yeah, you can see. Obviously I've just gone in that way with the pink. Very, very dry brush. And then just bring in the yellow out. And if I've made one of these a bit too strong, just go over it a few times, smudge it out a little bit. But it is a really dry brush. And the edges that you're not happy with, if it's cauliflowered a little bit on the end, again, really dry brush, and just tease it. I mean, yeah, it, it, it takes longer than just whack, 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 but you'll end up getting faster, you'll end up learning more about your paints, and you'll end up with something that you like at the end of the day. You know, so that you can say, look what I've done. Yeah, it might have took me, you know, a lot longer than other people, but I did it. And say, that line there, it's a bit too dark. Rinse your brush out. Get most of the moisture off. Just touch it. Wipe your brush off. Thirsty brush. 
you can even make your brush chisel it like that. I wouldn't do too much at once, give it time to settle, to dry back, and then give it another go because it, it's It always looks darker when it's wet, obviously. I need to point to your brush for doing that. Right, if that screen just timed out, that probably means that that's probably about 30 minutes, so that's going to need editing like crazy. Or it might get put up as another video like an option if you want to watch I suppose right that's dried too much now <laughs> typical very 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 gently I might as well just do this piece at once and then do the other side it more or less you know um, just damped it down very slightly so you, you don't want pools of water you don't want to be able to see too much water on the surface or else you just aren't going to end up where you I'm sure they call them cauliflowers. See there were a little gap there and that I'll just fill in. Right, so the shadow goes straight. Like that. And then peaks down. And then does that. the curve and there's a tiny bit of shadow there because that petal bends right over It's blending in a little bit better. But because this is a very pale next to a very dark bit, I didn't want to flood that with too much. Because that's just like pure colour. So if too much fluid went there, it'd have just gone slowly, but straight over and I've picked probably the two colours that are the worst to lift off but there you go, that's me that's Andy as well um, sea sponge in a little bit of water if you want a dry brush, touch the top so it, it's more or less dryish. Um, oh, hang on. 
I hope you can pick this up. I'm brushing the top of the sponge. That's how much water's in there. Pushing the bottom of the sponge, like pushing it into the bottom of the sponge. And it's probably soaked right through to the other layer. There's quite a lot more water in there. No, it's alright. You can see how that one's pretty light and that one's pretty dark. So yeah, sponge well under. Especially the sea sponges because they have um, little weird hole, pockety, homey looking things in them. Uh, right, what we're doing? Wetting that slightly. Putting some more of that edge colour in there. Might as well blend it down first into that bright yellow I wish I was an expert and I could just say oh yeah you do this, this, this and this Right, no, don't put your brush in your mouth this time, you won't speak. I don't know why you hold stuff between, well, between your lips, it's a silly habit. Right, how dark is that? That goes off at that sort of angle. bit the line sort of curl outwards <laughs> that sort of way and these they go go that way it's incredibly hard when you've always painted with only yourself in mind and you used to turn in, you know, you're drawing to, or you're painting or whatever, to whichever direction you want to go with your hand, and whichever way your brain works best, to keep the camera in mind is very hard work. And your shoulder blades and everything really feel it. Right, water that down a little.
I don't know, some people twist, I mean I'm very bender as it is, but I, d I don't know people <laughs> manage. I want to see people giving people stick about it and comments, it's just especially it's usually the people who's never done a video before in their life right. I'm picking up a little bit of dry paint I mean absolute flex you see that bit of what I've been doing, twisting the brush to make it into a point on there. I haven't dipped it into any water. It's still whatever was on the brush. And basically it's just more of the same. Till you're happy. Shadows there blurred out too much. And that's what tells you that the petal goes up and round. But it goes round like that. Round like that. It's a strange photo. There's like shadows with other shadows. I think the lights have come from two different directions. Some of the shadows are very, very strong and some aren't. Or it was natural light and artificial light. This petal goes like that and then it rises up and then goes down and there is actually a little bit of shadow there. off in that, that direction. See what I mean? This is my, <laughs> my wet in wet, very loose, very quick. Knock it out in an afternoon. <laughs> probably going to put the camera back in fast forward mode, you've probably heard enough mindless babble off me if you're at all interested in 
when I do some more um, rather than just fast forward ones you know some more this is how and why and what and what I've learned so far oh I don't show you the paper So that's watercolour. And I knew I weren't going to flood it, flood it. But it was, um, crack of it. Where's it from? Anyway, that's it and it, it's slightly textured. Sort of smooth on that side, rough on that side. Slightly dimpled on that side, but I don't know. I don't know about it. It's not the easiest, and it's certainly. Um, and I've tried to do not all one side and then other, which might have been a bad thing for it. I don't know. Anyway. Right, I'll stick it back into fast forward. Uh, I hope you've got some of it or at least been entertained by my mindless, totally don't know what I'm doing babble. Thanks for watching. Bye.